Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more relationship stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider in a like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. Let's crack on with today's first story. Now, this story comes from Pink Monster XA, who says, Am I the asshole for refusing to babysit the golden child's baby after he disowned me for being adopted? I, 20 femme, was adopted when I was 16 by my half-brother and his wife who were in their late 30s at the time. They already had six children when they adopted me, but it was never an issue. They have treated me like their own kids since they met me and later adopted me. So did all the other kids, except for one, their golden child who is only four months older than me. We will call him Chad. Chad has always been an insensitive asshole to literally everyone including our other siblings. He would literally fist fight our older sister, say horrible and mean things to everyone and get away with it. He also had extreme anger issues that would case broken doors, holes in walls, etc. He also got to do everything me and my sister were never able to do. Got a free car, go out at night, etc. When we were still in school together during high school, he got up in front of our whole class year and told everyone I wasn't his sister and never would be. He then told me in front of his friends that I would never be a part of his family and I should just get over it and walked off. This was not a one and done thing. He would keep doing this up until he moved out and I stopped seeing slash talking to him. Golden Boy once again got the limelight to the family after he got married right after high school. Moved out to his wife's family's house and then had a baby, the first grandbaby. Since this has happened, I stayed as far away from him as possible only seeing him for family pictures every year because our mother asks. Recently, I decided to come forward to our mum about what he said and did because she was upset about how I was distancing myself from him. She basically pulled the, that's still my kid and it's my first grandbaby card as the reason she wasn't going to be upset over it. I didn't really care to be honest. I knew it wasn't going to change her mind on a kid anyway. Out of nowhere, I got a message begging me to come babysit for them because... You're the only one who can deal with these kind of babies because no one will help. Apparently, they are weaning their kid off breastfeeding and the baby is extremely clingy because of that. And the fact that the mum is a germ phobia who basically isolated the kid since birth. It's literally only been held by like six people since it's been born. They know I don't sleep for the most part because I'm an insomniac with ADHD and I'm not bothered by crying. For some reason, I can sit for hours with a baby crying and it doesn't bother me. Can't tell if that's a blessing or a curse at this point. My sister is mad at me because apparently they haven't asked anyone else in the family for help but me. And everyone wants to go see this baby. Am I the asshole not wanting to be around or take care of the baby because his father said I'm not part of his family? Absolutely not the asshole in the situation in any way whatsoever. You don't have to help people that's treated you like shit in the past. It's quite that simple to me. And what I found particularly sad about this is your mum who you went to to talk about your feelings and how you was treated and you know because obviously she saw that you was distancing yourself from him and instead of you know acknowledging your feelings she pulled the that's still my kid and it's my first grandbaby rather than recognizing you know he was an absolute asshole to you which is awful so now i think it puts you in an incredibly difficult position it's putting you in the middle which I absolutely know shouldn't be the case, but I can just see people looking at you, not helping and going, oh, so you're not helping him now and turning on you because of it. You know, hopefully that won't be the case. But attempted adult says not the arsehole. I would send them your hourly rates. You will charge for the work. When Chad tries to pull the family card, say clearly that he has always publicly announced that you're not his sister and never will be. So you are only keeping Chad's word. Another user says not the arsehole at all. Stand your ground. You do not owe Chad anything. He took action. Now he has to face the consequences. Just keep repeating. He said that I was not part of his family and never would be. Therefore, I owe him nothing. This is not open for discussion. My decision is final. Whiskey Cheddar says, I say this gently, but your adopted parents aren't as great as you think they are. Treating your children differently. Showering gifts and praise one out of the seven kids and allowing one to be an asshole to the rest is horrible. I'm sorry they knew way before you sat your mum down and told her. She has always known and looked the other way. Bit old fat says, are you kidding? These people are asking a stranger, figuratively, since you are not family to Golden Boy and literally to the kid who's never laid eyes on you to babysit their child. 
Parents say no one will help, but according to your sis, no one in your family's been asked. And child is clingy because they're weaning him off breastfeeding. These people are living in a fantasy world. Is their plan to dump a screaming kid on you and race off into the night? Frankly, the way they've raised the kid and treated you, they don't deserve any help from you. Not the arsehole. E.T. Porkchop says not the arsehole. I would ask why they want and trust a stranger to babysit their child. You are not his sister or family, remember? You get to pick and choose when to respect someone. Don't be used. And yes, that's your mum's son, but if she excuses his cruel asshole behavior, then she's just as bad. Which Capital Western replies that and says not the asshole. Unfortunately, you don't have the backing of your parents. You're damned if you do and damned if you don't at this point. If you say you're not going to do it, they're going to try and force the issue which means you have to talk to them more and more about his behavior and how it affected your growing up. If you do decide to do it tentatively, that still means you need to talk to them. But then that means getting your boundaries met or you're attempting to actually babysit for them, like getting paid up front. Edit, no, I changed my mind. Tell them you're not gonna do it. Basically, make them fight for it. And in the process, they're gonna have to face the mirror and the kind of parents that they are, as well as the kind of son their golden boy really is. So OP does update the post and says, I want to say this. I read everyone's comments and it made me feel much better knowing my feelings on this whole situation are valid. I wanted to give an update that most of you may not like. After I posted, I ended up talking to two of my friends from high school. They were actually there during multiple occasions when Chad publicly said all that stuff. I talked with them for a little while. One of these friends actually came over almost weekly when I was still living at my parents' home. So she firsthand understands my family. We talked and we all mutually agreed. I go this once, see if we can't mend things. If not, I can tell my mum and sister I tried and we are done with the whole thing. And if the whole negative thing with my family keeps up, we'll cut them off for good. So I accepted to go babysit. I went over to Chad's house around 8 p.m. As soon as I showed up, I was greeted by Chad's wife who was extremely happy to see me. She was tired. You could just tell she had the I have a one-year-old face going on. She talked to me for a few minutes about how happy she was I came over and how she was glad to be going out with Chad. I kind of just listened to her go on and on before she finally got to the baby. Let's call him Seth. She explained to me his night routine, feedings, etc. Nothing too big. Then she got to the end where she started going on about how he was having crying fits at night and how he wouldn't get to sleep until mid-morning. I was a little eh on that, but all babies have different routines I guess. She then said they would only be gone about four hours and that they would be home around like 12, 30, 1 at most. After this, Chad shows up from their room, literally starts talking to his wife, looks at me, then kind of just looks me over for a minute and gives me a small wave and nod before heading out of the house. His wife follows and simply tells me to call or text if I need anything. For a minute, I was just stunned but went to work to see Seth, which was odd because it was my first time seeing him in person and not in photos that are hung around our partner's house. In person, he is the cutest little baby ever. He was fine the whole time and he only cried because there was no one in the room, not because of the weaning. By this time, it was around 11.30, almost 12. I would check the clock every few minutes just to see what time it was. 12.30 rolled around and I'm like, should I text them? I'm like, no, let me give them another few minutes until I need to text them. I ended up texting both of them at one, asking where they were because they did say they would be home by now. I got no reply from either of them. They finally show up at three in the morning. I'm livid at this point. Not even over having to take care of Seth for a longer period of time, but just because they never text me back. Like what if there was an emergency or something? They'd walk into the living room and I'm just like, I texted asking where you all were and no one answered. And Chad's wife starts saying that, oh, Chad said it was fine and that it would only be an hour or more. And I was just like, you know what, it's fine, whatever. Seth is sleeping. She looks at me all weird and I rolled my eyes and said, it's not the weaning that's making him cry at night. He gets lonely, he's clingy. Just him knowing you're in the room when he starts crying and he will go right back to sleep. I started to walk out with my stuff. As I was about to walk completely past Chad, when I turned around and I was like, so aren't you going to say anything to me after I looked after your kid for like seven hours now? He snorted at me and was like, no, my wife is the one who taught me into this anyway. Pissed off at this point, I said that this wasn't, I don't know, possibly a way to be able to apologize for high school or maybe all those other times you decided to outcast me from the family. Because I was under the impression that maybe you want to patch things up because of you asking me of all people to watch your kid. He sat there for a minute and just said, why should I apologize? Because literally nothing from high school has changed. 
Man, you really do need to just grow up and understand that me and my wife aren't going to cater to you like mum and dad did because you're adopted. You ain't our family and you won't ever be. At this point, I just got in my car and left. I ended up texting my mom about all of it, thinking she would get it in the morning when she woke up. Though, of course, she had to be awake. She apparently told Chad's wife about the conversation we had, about all the stuff Chad had said and done to me in school. Apparently, his wife felt bad because she had an adopted sister too. How horrible that Chad had done and said all those things. Apparently, mum didn't know about Chad asking about the babysitting thing until now. And she started talking to the wife who is now upset. Apparently, she thought Chad would have changed since then. I didn't think he would act the way he did when I left. I told my mum that I'm done with him and that if something ever happens with Seth, then I would be there, but I was done with them until that happens. The way things are going, I will most likely be cutting my whole family off because this isn't worth the stress anymore. Just over a month later, OP updates again and says, so it's been a hot minute since I last updated on the whole Chad situation. It's mainly due to the surprising fact that my family, my mother and sister, not bugging me as much lately. The first day or two after the interaction with Chad was a bit hectic. Both of them were blowing up my phone, trying to get me to talk to them. Mostly my mum just making excuses for Chad and my sister trying to basically just tell me to get over it. I ended up telling the both of them in text and over the phone that I was over it and I'd be cutting myself off completely from Chad and his little family. This sparked some anger but my mother soon went quiet and later my sister. Everything seemed to be pretty good after that for a while. That was until a week later when my sister showed up unannounced at my apartment, demanding that I take the blessing of getting to be around Chad's sheltered child where no one else seemed to be able to. Basically acting like it was some huge honor that I was asked to babysit. I almost snapped. I wanted to call her a bitch and to get off my property and not come back because I was just so sick of it, but I didn't. From my doorstep, I told her that if she wanted to see the baby so bad, just go over and see it. It wasn't my issue to deal with and I slammed the door in her face and watched her leave. It's been radio silent for a while now until earlier this week. I was scrolling on Instagram when I noticed that my oldest brother, the one that I get along with super well and supported me about cutting Chad off, his girlfriend of four years and the same age as me, are now engaged and posted pictures of the proposal. I noticed the post had been made last week, but no one had told me, not even my mother. I text my brother's girlfriend asking her about literally everything that was happening. She was surprised because my mother had said she had told everyone in the family about the wedding. She then told me that they would be holding a family meeting at my parents' house to talk about the wedding plans. I said okay. The meeting was for today around dinner time. I showed up and walked into the house and noticed that a lot of stuff was different decoration wise. My parents had our family's photos all arranged around the living room and a few random frames with multiple small photos in them as well. I noticed that they had replaced multiple small photos of specifically me from the frames and replaced them with now pictures of Chad and his wife and my older brother and his girlfriend. What were maybe six pictures of me on the walls, there were now two. A baby picture of me and my senior high school photo that are now in the hallway, not even in the living room. I ignored it and didn't say anything. After a while, everyone showed up, except for, of course, Chad, who my mum pulled the he wanted to spend time with his baby BS. They all started talking about the people's plans of the part, aka people who were going to be the key parts of the wedding cast. I tried my best to listen and take in all of what my brother's girlfriend was saying. I noticed by the end of it all, my name was literally never added in any of the main plans. I wasn't mentioned at all in the plans. I started to question why I was there if I wasn't going to be in the main plans of the wedding. I was kind of like, why not just send me an invitation then? I went home and texted his girlfriend asking about what happened at the little meeting. Apparently, my mother had told her that I wouldn't want to be involved in any of the wedding stuff and that it wasn't my thing. She called me unfeminine and that I wouldn't like any kind of bridal stuff because I'm not girly. She then said everything was set in stone now. My older sister is going to be a bridesmaid and my little sister is going to be a flower girl. My little brother will be the ring holder. My other little brother and Chad will be groomsmen. And apparently, my mother also told her that because of what happened with Chad, that I shouldn't be sat at the family table, but at a guest table. I will just be another guest at the wedding. I didn't really say anything back because it hurt. It hurt that my mother would say that about me, that I was unfeminine, and that just because I myself didn't do a lot of girly things in my spare time, I wasn't able or enjoy doing something like a wedding or be a bridesmaid. I can't believe she would say that about me. 
To be honest, I don't know if I'm even going to go. The wedding is scheduled for the end of the year. It sounds stupid and petty, but this hurt me. It hurt me that I'm being outcasted, most likely due to Chad once again. And as I'm typing this, my sister has texted me about how she is helping plan all the bride stuff. Honestly, I'm going to leave it off at this for right now because I don't know how to even feel if you know what I mean right now. In the next day or so, I might update when I feel up to it. There was a couple of lines of update which OB said, I don't even know what to say. I didn't expect to update again so soon, but I just got the news from my older brother's fiance. Chad's wife is pregnant again. Then roughly four months later, OP says it's been a minute since I updated. I would say it's because everything is going great, but I would be slightly lying. Things have only mildly gotten better for me since the last update. I have moved even farther away from my parents since the last few updates. In part, I hopefully try and start a process of trying to cut them off from my life. This has worked a bit, but not enough to actually make me feel any better. They, mostly my mother, have still decided to take time to bother me and showing up at my new place and only giving me a second of a heads up. There is no update concerning the wedding. I've only gotten an invitation through the mail. I'm not going to try and press it anymore. I'm going to go, but I will most likely leave after the ceremony and not stay to hang out with anyone. Chad's situation has grown only by the fact that over a group chat, they decided not to have any kind of gender reveal or even a baby shower. They just announced that they are now having a girl. I don't want to be an ass, but Chad's wife stretched the fact that Chad randomly made her get up and go and get an ultrasound to find out the gender. She acted like she really didn't want to do it. Apparently, they went to one of those fancy ultrasound places where you get fancy models of the fetus and high-tech ultrasound pics. Chad also announced that he is going to college now and asked for a $1,000 loan, which they gave to him. They have always stretched that they will never loan money to any of their kids. My stomach turned when they happily gave him the money, but they wouldn't lend me 20 bucks for school books when I went to college. They refused to help me get into college. I muted the group chat. I also found out that my sister has possibly outed me to mum. I came out when I was in high school as being bisexual with a preference for women. This didn't go well to be quite honest as my mum pulled I have a lesbian cousin who is married to a woman, followed up by a homophobic story about how her friend traumatized her in college by taking her to a gay bar and she got hit on by another female. Not great. My brother fully believes that my love for women is trauma-based because of the abuse I faced from our bio father. My heart was broken when all of this came to the surface. Knowing they both truly wouldn't support me, they would only lie to my face about being uncomfortable by my life. I basically promised myself that I would never tell them if I got a female partner in hopes of saving not only my feelings but my partner's feelings in the long run it makes me extremely uncomfortable to think about them looking me in the eyes and believing everything that they had told me concerning their feelings about my lifestyle i fear my sister has told her mum about me dating a female now but i've moved further away from them something that i never did while in the house living with them i noticed on my girlfriend's instagram my sister had liked one of the pictures of me and my girlfriend my girlfriend after hearing all of this supports me about not posting pictures of us Thing as she knows that my family follows me on Instagram. My girlfriend has not tagged me in any pictures on Instagram. But my sister had been looking through my friend on Instagram. Not even a week after the photo was live, I had to see my sister in person for something. She started to make awkward comments about my dating life. And if I was seeing anyone, which I only said, maybe, and left it at that. Two days later, my mum is showing up at my front door with some store-bought cookies, asking me if there's anything I want to tell her. I brushed her off and didn't see anything. She then left and hasn't said anything else to me. A few hours later, little brother texts me, asking if I had told mum about me dating because she's apparently going crazy and about how his dad is just telling her that, that it's just a trauma response. I haven't told anyone about me dating, so clearly someone told her about me dating, especially the fact that they are bringing up I'm dating a female. I honestly don't know what I'm supposed to do at this point, as I'm trying my best to cut them off. My girlfriend is telling me not to think about it too much and that we can get through it together. I honestly don't know where I would be without her at this point because she is the only one keeping me sane throughout this entire transition. This update isn't anything grand, but it is something. I wish I could fully say that my life is getting better, but it's really only getting better at a snail's pace. At the moment, all I can say is thank you to everyone who's been supporting me throughout all of these updates. Everyone's input has actually made me see how messed up and how wrong my family has been treating me and how I shouldn't be letting them continue to lead my life and invalidate my feelings. I hope to update 
after the wedding in a few months. This story just, it absolutely broke my heart for, for Opie and the way that they talk. It sounds like they so badly want to be a part of that family, but, but they're just getting nothing back from them. And a part that really struck me is when Opie went to the, to the house that they, they grew up in and pictures of them had been replaced. But all the way through it, all, the, all I could think of is, what are you getting from these? And I, like I say every single time, I know it's incredibly easy for me to say I'm sat here behind a microphone talking about someone else's life. I'm not living it. But from my point of view, you're getting nothing from these people apart from pain and hurt. Every time you talk to them, every time you see them, you don't seem to be getting any ounce of respect at all. So why would you want to be a part of it? Whatever you decide to do, OP, I truly wish you all the best. But now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this? situation let me know your thoughts down in the comments below now just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories your love your support your time always means the absolute world to me so thank you so much for being involved and hopefully we'll see you in the next one take care and much love